Welcome to Two Cute for Cancer. My name is Jody, and welcome if you're new. I'm happy to have you. And if you've been following me for a while, let's do this. You guys know the drill. All right. Today's subject was supposed to be a get ready with me, and then I was going to go over this subject that I have been researching, and it's been a debate on many different fronts with uh, on my channel, on other people's channels. So I thought today I would just tell you my findings, my thoughts, and yeah, <laughs> my solutions. So let's get started. Oh, and I digress. Before, I was going to do a get ready with me. But as you know, uh, we are selling the house and people are coming in and out, in and out, looking at our property so at any time during the day I have to jump up grab my stuff grab the dog and out the door I go so as I was getting ready to do my makeup and chat with you all um, I got one of those calls and I had to leave and I just now got home and then it was dinner time so I think that I'm gonna do a separate get ready with me for Sunday's video and this one's just going to be a good old fashioned sit down. All right. So, all right. Now the topic of keto versus vegan, those two diets could not be any further <laughs> from each other. A ketogenic diet traditionally is you eat, uh, all meat, cheese, high fats, um, low carb greens, you limit your veggies, no starchy veggies, no fruit or a minimum fruit, and you get your body into a ketosis state to where you're burning fat and calories. All right, vegan diet is completely opposite. We eat everything and anything, all the vegetables that God's created, organic because of pesticides, and fruits, and grains and lentils and seeds and nuts and you name it anything that god created comes out of the earth whole foods we eat it plant-based whole foods we eat okay so there are pros and cons to both and i'm going to go over them with you what i did is i went on and i listened to the doctors that support some of the big wigs that support the ketogenic diet. And I found three main guys, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Young or Jung um, was one of them. He's also the pioneer of intermittent fasting along with the ketogenic diet. So anyway, he's an internal medicine guy. The two other guys were just regular doctors, internal medicine as well. They were not heart specialists. They were not um, dietitians, nothing, but they were doctors. Okay, I'll give them that. Um, on the vegan side, I listened to a lot of the head guys and they were cardio surgeons, um, dietitians, uh, mostly were uh, one was one guy was a kidney doctor okay so we've got doctors on each side <laughs> so when you hear like well a doctor told me to do this you're like okay then it must be okay right but what happens when there's a doctor on both sides of the issue then it's like hmm I don't know what I'm gonna do <laughs> so let's go through the pros and cons um, after reading tons of articles, listening to hordes of doctors fight over the keto, this is my takeaway. No one diet is perfect for all. Um, different lifestyles and different tastes for each person. Everyone has a different um, body chemistry, has different needs. Like for example, I am type one diabetic. Um, so a high carb, traditional high carb diet of breads and gluten and white potatoes and white rice and white bread is not good for me. So, but I am a devout vegan, a vegetarian slash vegan. I'm 90% vegan, 10% is vegetarian because I like to have a little bit of cheese um, or maybe an egg inside of a, you know, a product when I go out. 
uh, just makes it a little bit easier to live and um, yeah so that's what I do all right um, let's go over the keto pros um, many many people have lost a lot of weight on ketogenic diets there is no I mean you can't deny that um, Bentley no no what Bentley was looking like he might want to hike his legs so I just had to catch him sorry about that anyway um, ketogenic diets people lose tons of weight morbidly obese people tend to follow ketogenic diet because it doesn't have as many limitations they can keep eating their meat and their cheese and their sour cream and their all of that and they can still lose weight and their blood sugars usually go down and initially because they lose weight they usually their cholesterol goes down and everything just all around their blood work looks pretty good all right now ketogenics um, have no sugar they don't you know obviously no sugar um, it's simple and can be followed anywhere. That's a positive of a ketogenic diet. You can find meat on every corner. <laughs> a little harder to find vegetables on any, every corner. However, it is getting much easier. All right, so, um, all right. Now, keto negatives. Animal protein is a fact, it's car carcinogenic. It is full of carcin carcinogenic. It's it's like eating. It's like giving yourself cancer after. I mean, maybe not one or two bites of it, but a lifetime of eating meat has been proven to cause cancer. And if you have cancer, they automatically tell you stop the sugar and stop eating meat, or at least get your meat down and add your veg and your greens in. So that is, um, yeah. Okay, the negative, um, also, uh, a ketogenic diet promotes cancer. They have shown, they've done many studies in the uh, American Cancer Journal where that it's just animal product, period, is causes cancer. So that's a negative. Um, keto, due to the high fats, clogs arteries, raises cholesterol over time. Now, in the beginning, when you're first on it, like I was talking to someone, I think it was someone on my channel, um, and in, under my notes, I was talking to them and they said that they were obese, so they did a ketogenic diet for a season. And then after they lost their weight and stuff, their cholesterol started going up because of all the high fats and all the, the meat they were eating. So then they transitioned into a vegan diet, which I think is awesome because sometimes what you lose weight, what helps you lose weight is not what you can do for a lifetime. So that I thought was a perfect example, the perfect transition. So anyway, and also many doctors do not, they don't tell you to do keto forever. <laughs> it's like, you don't wanna stay in a state of ketogenic forever. You want to start adding foods back in. It's not something that you wanna stay on, you know, not the strict part, you can start adding the you know, all the good veggies and fruits back in. And then it's not really a keto diet anymore, is it? <laughs> so um, also studies show that people who have done long-term uh, ketogenic diets eat, um, end up with high cholesterol fatty livers. That's one thing that they find with people that have done um, the Atkins back in the day. My day, I was a huge Atkins girl. Oh my gosh. Had the little sticks you pee on. I had it down. The stinky breath. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> so anyway, um, they are seeing fatty livers, which is like um, usually you see in obese people, but they're seeing it in skinny people. So, but it's from the high fat and the animal products. Okay. Um, keto limits many of the good foods that we should be eating. And that concerns me because any diet that says you can't eat that and you can't eat that and you can't do this, and there's not a really good variety of whole foods, I, I get a little concerned at. So when someone says to just eat, you know, uh, dairy, animal, 
fat and sour cream and cheese and all that and drink a lot of water and throw some spinach in here and there. That just doesn't seem like, it just doesn't seem like it's a good idea anyway. But that's me. All right. Now, let's go on to, um, yeah, that's one thing that always bothered me. Even when I was doing Atkins, it was like telling me that, no, I can't have an apple. No, I can't have corn on the cob. No, I can't have, you know, all this different stuff, all this stuff that's growing out of the earth that God made for us to eat. No, you can't eat that was really hard for me to accept even back when I was doing napkins. So that was one of the negatives to me. Okay, now a vegan diet promotes heart health, digestion, helps cure diseases by lowering inflammation. There is not one disease that vegan diets cause. And that was, I got from several different uh, cardiologists and doctors. There's like, that was one of the, the staples of um, when a vegan diet is followed right. If you don't eat your, if you don't eat a balanced um, balance of all your vegan foods and get your protein in, then yeah, you can become anemic. However, <laughs> there is so much protein in every single thing that we eat in our greens and in our lentils and our beans, it would be so hard to be a vegan and not get some protein in there. You would be pretty much eating carbs and sugar, which there is a channel on YouTube. It's called the Junk Food Vegan. Oh my gosh, I'm just like, please don't do that. <laughs> it shows you how to get uh, fast food, fr uh, frozen foods, how to be a vegan easy, and basically eat no good foods for you. and. It, it just, it, I just cringe every time I watch this channel. Anyway, that would be bad for you. <laughs> That's just common sense. But overall, if a vegan diet is followed by including all the colors of the rainbow and the veggies, the lentils, the beans, getting your, your uh, proteins in that way, then um, it does not cause any, any harmful effects to you, except for lo losing weight very easy to keep your weight down um, being a vegan just in general. When I first started becoming a vegan, I was already skinny, so it really didn't change anything for me. Um, after becoming, getting on massive steroids and gaining some weight, um, I did gain weight, but then when I got really strict with my eating and back on my vegan eating and stuff, it, it it came down, it came off, and I'm still dealing with a couple extra pounds, but that's because I'm over 50 now, I'm closer to 60, and I eat too much of the gluten and the bad stuff that vegans, yes, can get into. <sighs> so anyway, okay. Um, the good part of being a vegan, all the colors of the rainbows and potatoes and sweet potatoes, avocados, seasoning, herbs, lentils, beans, oh my, seeds and nuts and oh my gosh, the list goes on. The list of yummy foods that you can eat is just, it's amazing. So not having limits is awesome. Um, there's even impossible burgers and uh, fast food um, vegan places now. I mean, you can go just about anywhere and eat vegetarian at least and vegan in most most places. So it's not that hard to get, um, have everything at your fingertips anymore like it used to be. Um, okay, also a positive on the vegan diet, it can be used uh, you can self-sustain on it. You can grow all your veggies. You can have a garden. You can grow uh, fruit trees. You can pretty much live off the land and get everything that you need from it. So that's good if you ever find yourself in the, that position. <laughs> Hopefully not. Ooh. My son and daughter, they live off grid and that's what they do. They have an enormous garden. They have everything, everything you can imagine. Um, then they have their potatoes and then they have uh, an orchard. They have cherries and grapes and apples and peaches and pears and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, and they pretty much, they're, they're self-sustained. Uh, they do have chickens. They raised organic chickens all from itty bitty babies on. They do eat their own eggs. So 
they are, I don't know what that's called. They're not really vegan. They're more vegetarian, vego octo, or I don't know. Uh, anyway, so the good news is that you can do um, a low carb diet on a vegan diet, on a vegetarian diet. People do not ever consider that <laughs> because it is a lot harder because you have to really, really um, plan for it and stuff. But it would be pretty simple just to lose weight on a vegan diet by cutting your white potatoes out, cutting your white rice out, cutting breads and stuff like that out, and boom, you've got a low carb diet or a lower carb diet. Okay, um, both diets and all doctors agree that wheat or gluten are bad for us. Now these are the things that both sides agree on. And the one is a first off sugar. Everyone agrees sugar is bad. Sugar uh, feeds cancer. It doesn't feed cancer like we think. Like I, I have sugar in here, I'm gonna do this, and all of a sudden it's gonna go to my cells and my cells are gonna grow. That's not the way it happens. If you eat more sugar, it's an inflammatory, um, it's an inflammatory thing in your body. More inflammation is a happy environment for cancer cells and then they spread and they grow. Um, they, uh, the tests that they give you, uh, the PET scans that they give you, they put glucose in your veins so the cancer will come out and look for that. It seeks the sugar out and then they take a picture of the cancer. So that kind of gives you a little bit of kind of like a, hmm, sugar might not be a good thing. So um, sugar is an inflammatory and it has caused to, I don't know if it causes cancer. I heard a couple doctors say that, uh, but it definitely uh, will be making your cancer cells very happy the more sugar that you do eat because the more inflammation that you have in your body. So sugar, mm, bad, both sides agree on that. Spikes your glucose which is bad on all different fronts. Okay, the set, whoops, sorry, my phone just went off. The second thing is um, that both sides agree on is gluten, wheat. Gluten has proven time and time again to tear up your gut. If you have celiacs, it'll kill you. I have a friend who does have celiacs and basically even the tiniest bit of gluten, she gets violently ill. So, not a good thing. But gluten, even on someone who is not even gluten sensitive, like I'm not even gluten sensitive, they did all that testing and I'm not, but because of the surgery I had on my stomach and my gut and the bloating and everything, I have taken all different kinds of fat belly stuff and all these different supplements. And basically, if I just got rid of wheat, got rid of gluten in my diet, then I wouldn't have that problem. So anyway, so both of the doctors on both sides agree that gluten is not good. It's an inflammatory, the same as sugar and gluten. It causes an inflammation in your body that causes disease. It enhances whatever disease that you already do have, like RA. Um, so there's that. So for myself and for my tummy and my issues, I will, I'm still gonna remain a vegan. There's no other, I never, I never even thought about jumping over to the other side, but I did wanna see what, it, what the fuss was all about and go back, you know, kind of explain the differences and such. Okay, the one thing that I didn't mention, um, now this is not the reason that I went um, gluten or gluten-free, cheese Jody, um, animal-free, but it has become a very good reason for me to continue not eating an animal other than the health benefits. Uh, when you start doing, listening to all the documentaries about not eating meat, they also show you how meat is made <sighs> and how they kill the animals and all the different uh, hazards that um, come from killing animals. Other than it's just cruel and mean, I mean, I think we all agree if we could have an animal without killing it, you know, I mean, eat the meat without harming it, that would be the best way, but we can't. 
So we do, we kill the animals and we eat it, which I don't have any moral issue on, um, but a vegan diet is just more kind. It just is for the environment and for animals. All right, now for myself, I'm gonna continue on my vegan diet because that's what I believe has kept me going for 20 years with cancer. It has, it has kept the inflammation on my body low. It is, I try to make everything in my body not hospitable to cancer. I don't, want, I don't want to make cancer happy and grow. So I do everything in my power to keep my body as um, non-alkaline and just, just as healthy as possible. I just do my part and then I let God do the rest. Um, okay, but I do struggle with gluten and wheat. So I started looking through a different sites and everything and I came up on um, oh especially during right now comfort foods I have been craving bread like crazy because comfort foods whenever I'm stressed out I want to go for you know comfort food and <laughs> bread so anyway I was looking around at the ketogenic sites and there's one thing that I did find and I was very impressed with because they gave uh, options for vegans to actually use it, not just people that are paleo and such. Anyway, I'm gonna show it to you. It looks so yummy. Um, it's called Keto Bread and I downloaded the, you can put it, it's an app you can download and it has the recipes and it tells you how to, to bake it or you can actually order the book. I just downloaded it and I think it was like $17. It wasn't very expensive. But anyway, they tell you, let's see. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. I just wanna eat it right now. That right there, baby, is so yummy, good. No gluten, it is totally and completely uh, perfect for keto, uh, keto diets and vegetarian and vegan. And what she does is, this lady, she has severe gut issues and stuff and she couldn't eat bread and she loved it, so she started making bread that she could eat. So um, they give you, she gives you, uh, let me see, the one recipe, the only one that I've tried so far, I ate, it was like a little tiny, if you do it, double the, double the, um, double the recipe because you will eat it all. I, it was like just this little tiny thing of bread. And so from last night to ne today, I <laughs> It's all gone. Bad, 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 bad. Still has calories, by the way. Anyway, um, let's see. Oh, she tells you, um, like for example, for the bread, uh, instead of using sour cream, like, like she used in her uh, ketogenic one, um, she gave us tofuti, which is a vegan um, uh, sour cream. So she gives you all these different options, even how to do it without eggs. Now I eat eggs, so I was fine with just putting an organic egg in my bread, so I didn't have any problems with that. But if you are a pure vegan and you do not touch eggs, then there is uh, egg replacement and she even tells you what kind is the best for her bread. Anyway, I have found the perfect solution for my stress eating where I don't have to mess up my gut, I don't have to cause inflammation, and I can still lose weight. The, every piece of bread, and the, the bread is like, you know, pretty thick, like, like this, and like a pretty good size of bread, is less than five net carbs. Okay, now I haven't done carbs in a really long time, but when I looked at my Ezekiel bread that I normally eat, it had like 24 grams of uh, carbs. So I'm assuming that's a good thing for you ketogenic people out there. So anyway, I have found something that works for me. And I think that each person has to find something that just works for their lifestyle. And I don't think that if you eat meat your whole life, you're gonna die because there's so many people that have eaten, my grandma, I mean, she ate sides of bacon and blah, all her whole life. And she did die, 
but she died from smoking because she smoked cigarettes and she got uh, throat cancer. So she didn't die from eating the meat. So, you know, there's that. But um, my aunt, who is still, she's 90, almost 100 years old. She has smoked ever since she was 12 years old. She eats meat every single day, drinks a beer every day, and she's a nurse, or was a nurse, and she's still alive, and she is still kicking. So, there's that. So sometimes, you know, you can do everything that you possibly can, and life happens, you know, disease happens, and we can't control that. But if you can do what you can, where you can feel good, even if this didn't help my cancer, I would do it anyway, because I like it. And because I feel so good, I have, I have less pain, I have more energy, and you know, who doesn't want that, right? So, okay. I'm going to end it today and for this app, this uh, ketogenic bread stuff, they also have like desserts and all that, but I didn't, I didn't even, I just like, I didn't even look because I do not want to get into that because I will eat it all and I'll eat too much. So, but for my bread, I did make that change. Alrighty. Um, oh, bagels too. You can make bagels. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I'll take a picture of the next time I make it and I'll show you guys, you're gonna be like drooling. So anyway, I am going to drop a link to this precious lady and her keto bread uh, below uh, in the description for you guys. All right, and that's it for today. Now, if you are not following me on my journey and you would like to, this is not a typical thing that I do. Usually I vlog my week and I take you along just with my life. Every single thing, everything that happens, you guys get to know. Today was just just an odd occurrence. <laughs> so anyway, hit the subscribe button, set that little bell up to ring, you know what to do, <laughs> and I will see you next time at Too Cute for Cancer.